How does one define simplicity? Very good question. Uh, to me, it is just uh, a distilled thought, uh, something that registers quickly, um, doesn't require a lot of explanation, seems intuitively obvious, that kind of a thing. And I think uh, a lot of businesses out there tend to put things uh, in terms uh, that require more, more thought, study, or whatever. And I think what made Steve Jobs such a genius was that he had this belief in the power of simplicity. And he wanted to ensure that his products embodied that and the way the company communicated with people embodied that. So I think simplicity is this thing, it's a concept really that gets applied to so many different things. It, it's not just, oh look, it's a simple product. It's, it's the whole um, structure of the organization, is it, the belief system, all that stuff is based on this idea that, that human beings have uh, a built-in desire for simpler things. We just don't like to labor over complex issues. And when someone has something to to share with us, whether it's a product or service or whatever, that the people who, who really understand that simplicity is a, a very powerful thing, those are the people who, who establish an emotional connection with their customers, which is something that Apple was very, very good at doing. I do think that simplicity is one of the hardest things y you can do. And it is deceptive in that way because it looks simple. <laughs> um, the way I like to put it is that there is no such thing as simplicity. There is only the perception of simplicity. That every simple thing we see in this world, whether it's an iPhone, obviously years worth of research goes into making the little things that make an iPhone. But you could look at a simple website and uh, we all know, we who create such things know that this beautifully simple site that you've, you've built could have been the result of, of weeks or months of, of anguished debate <laughs> and differences of opinion and arguments and whatever, and you end up with something that's simple. So what's really important is the perception of simplicity, uh, that if, if someone walks away from the experience and feels that it was simple, that's you know, mission accomplished. But I think getting there is really, really hard. It requires all that commitment and uh, energy. It, it, it doesn't come easily, I guess that's the point. But when you do get there, it becomes very, very worth it. In fact, there's a great Steve Jobs quote. It's always about Steve Jobs, isn't it? Um, where he said that um, it, it takes a lot of hard work to make something simple, but it's worth it in the end because once you get there, you can move mountains. And I think those are great words to live by. But he understood that that was the, the, the challenge for Apple was to take really cool products and really cool capabilities and put them in a, in a form that, that people could so easily relate to and, and take advantage of without thick manuals and that kind of a thing. So that's the real work is, is making great things simple. The big question is, how do you do it? Where does simplicity come from? And that's a question that I hear all the time. And, um, you know, I, I have some humble suggestions on that topic. Um, I think because simple is such a simple thing, it comes along with some simple advice. And I think that one of the most important things you can do is simply step back and look at your, what you're doing through the eyes of the customer. I believe that that was Steve Jobs' amazing strength, that he looked at this experience that Apple was creating, and he looked at it with a super critical eye. What would he think as a customer? I think that a lot of uh, company leaders don't do that as well as Steve, and I think you can 
criticize your, your own products and services and your website and all that stuff, um, you can excuse your own lapses by saying, yeah, well, we did the best we could because we had these certain issues and that's how we dealt with it. But that's the difference between you know, a regular person and a Steve Jobs kind of a person. Steve was just, I'm sorry, no compromise is allowed. And if you suggest to me that we're going to compromise, you know, your future here is probably not very good. He believed that the user experience was all important. So I always tell people, like, you know, the best place to start for me is to just be the customer and look at every part of the customer experience from the very first ad they might see to the website to what the retail experience is like, you know, how hard it is to order when you get the product, what does it feel like to open it up and, and start experiencing it, and, and the, then, of course, the design of the product, the interface, uh, when you need help, what's, you know, how easy it to, is it to get support, the whole bit. So you create this experience that is simple for people and you know, fails to, um, to confuse them in a very, very good way. So, you know, you look at all the choices some people provide to their customers, uh, you know, with all the best intentions, you might go to a website and there are 20 different products to choose from, whereas a, a company that really believes in simplicity might say, here are three, and we've thought it all out. There are three kinds of people here. There's, you know, the small, medium, and large, or whatever it is, um, that make it easy for you to make a decision, rather than, than, you know, force you to think too hard and then wonder after you made the purchase whether you might have made a big mistake, that kind of a thing. So I think Apple, again, has been very good at, at doing that kind of a thing. So its customers go away feeling pretty confident that they got the right thing and they enjoy the experience. But all along the way, all these decisions that must be made uh, need to be looked at with that kind of brutal bit of you know, self-analysis that, um, is the experience so good that you would actually tell your friends about it and say, you got to look at this thing with me. I, I love this thing and you're going to like it too. Or is it just kind of like, okay, and you know, I'd buy it. And then, you know, I'm not sure if I'd tell anyone about it, but that's, you know, it, it worked for me, that kind of a thing. And I think in the world of Steve Jobs, it was always about make the experience like amazingly good. And, I, and too many people are, are willing to compromise that away. Simplicity requires that kind of, that, that brutal assessment of what is really, really good versus what's good enough. And what's good enough isn't good enough. It's got to be really, really good. Okay, so you're Mr. Simplicity. What about your personal life? <laughs> How simple is that? And the answer is not at all, really, and I'm working on it. But I think Simplicity is something that works in business, and it should work in your personal life as well. Um, and it, it's, it's a gratifying way to live and work, I think. There's something very satisfying about having this kind of space in your life and the order and the lack of clutter and the, and the firm direction. But, you know, life is complicated, and that's... And it's because life is complicated that simplicity stands out. So we got to take the good with the bad. You know, we live in this complicated world, but that actually gives us an opportunity to be more noticed by being simple. So whether it's business or personal, uh, simplicity has that kind of power. Mm -hmm.